thinking on all that you learned below. If you've got your breath, we ought to discuss our next steps. Come. There are important matters to discuss. Thanks for watching out for me. You lot could have tossed me back in the shadows. You're one of us. No fist left behind. I'm glad that's still the case. Is it true you were a member of the absolute cult, Drow? Do you mean to judge me if I were? Dorothy? No. I mean to learn from you. Gods be damned. With that parasite in his brain, Father could wreak untold havoc in the Absolute's name. Should Baldur's Gate fall to the Absolute, every one of the coast cities will be ripe for the plucking. We're not just fighting for our cure. We're fighting for my father. We're fighting for the gate. We're fighting for all of Faerun. Orin? I'd never heard tell of. But Gortash, I know. Or know of, more precisely. A self-styled strategic advisor to Baldur's Gate's peers. A bit player with dreams of a leading role, the way Father told it. He had no use for Gortash, and even less for his advice. I don't remember much beyond that. But where these Chosen are concerned, I have a suspicion we're about to know more than we'd like. Worms Rock Fortress. All travelers to Baldur's Gate flow through it. It serves as headquarters for the Flaming Fist and their commander, my father. The Absolute's armies on the march. Gods forbid a tadpole Grand Duke throw open the gates for them. Yes, but first a question. If your home were under siege, what would you sacrifice to save it? As would I, and more. I was 17. Father, older Raven Guard, had just been named a Grand Duke and was called away to Elturel to help settle a dispute. That's when the Cult of the Dragon made its move. A religion devoted to conjuring the most evil of goddesses, the Dragon Tiamat. A ten day after Father left, I heard a whisper as I slept. Dusk Hawk Hill, the queen of chaos awakens. Go alone. I grabbed a rapier and set out. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, yet not a single star was shining. There they were, gathered at the foot of the hill. Your head tingles. Will wants to show you what happened. In the looming shadow of the mount, five groups of five figures each encircle a lofty totem. Atop each totem, a dragon's head is carved, and a massive orb held in its mouth. The cultists chant, first softly, then crying to the starless sky. There is a crack of thunder, a gust of wind, and a dragon's white head appears in the storm. The first of Tiamat's five heads. As the maelstrom howls, Mizora's lips press to your ear. She will destroy Baldur's Gate. Grant me your soul and I will give you the power to save it, she whispers. She read the terms while two devils stood witness. And I said yes. One soul for one city. She didn't. She came on order of her mistress, Zarya. Tiamat made a play for power. Zariel had other plans. That was the most Mazora's ever said. All that mattered was that she got her prize. Another pet added to her warlock menagerie. I don't know that it was brave. I just know that it was right. The moment I agreed, I burned with the fires of Avernus and oozed the rot of Dis. The cultists choked on our poisons and burned from our flames. And when we were done, 
All that remained were five great orbs atop a pile of ash. My soul was bound, and my lips were sealed. It is the one scar I ever bore of it. Mizora replaced it with a sending stone. She uses it to track my location and speak from a distance. I could flee to the spine of the world, or the depths of the lower dark, and still never shake her. He returned to an unsuspecting city and a wayward son with a smirking devil at his side. I tried to tell him the truth, but my mouth couldn't form the words. I'd led him to the battlefield, but Mazora had swept it clean. I showed him my stone eye, but he only turned away. After, he said only one word, go. So I did. I understand. I never saw myself as a banisher of shadows before. <laughs> I was always more of a lurker in, historically. Darling, I thought you'd never ask. I'll see you tonight. First in my heart. I will never tire of sitting on dead men's thrones. My blood ran hot when we broke Catherick's bones together. But we have greater challenges ahead of us. It is clear now that he was not working alone. During my time in the cult, I came to know one of his co-conspirators all too well. Baal's blood letter, Orin. To think, I thought her to be speaking for the Absolute. I worshipped that woman. You make it sound so simple. She is the Chosen of Baal, Lord of Murder, and one of the cult's founders. Indeed, she is the one who indoctrinated me with the Absolute's lies. She is fierce, vicious, and cruel. In those respects, <laughs> We are alike, but she is dangerously unpredictable. If there is a way to turn this design towards slaughter, rather than control, she will take it. She is the one who brought me to Moonrise and into the presence of her so-called God, the Absolute. Now I know that those memories are lies. There was no god. Orin held me down in a cocoon of flesh, while a mind flayer forced a parasite into my brain. And she laughed at my fear. I will find her. I will murder her. And I will smile. Let them think that. There is a short path from savior to ruler. A short and bloody path. I know it well, and we will walk it together. But Baldur's Gate is a mere bauble. We have the chance to see something much greater. Surely you see it. In killing Catherick, we fractured the cult's leadership. When we break the other Chosen and claim their Netherstones, we can take control.
the power of the enslaved Elder Brain could reshape the world. We could reshape the world. Nothing worthwhile ever came without loss. But together we have the strength to decide who loses, and to make sure it is not us. You are not stupid. When we reach Baldur's Gate and face the other Chosen, you will see that my way is the right one. The Elder Brain is the only thing that has ever managed to change my mind. You're welcome to try. We are bound, then, to travel together, even if we do not yet agree on our ultimate purpose. There is yet one thing about you that troubles me, though. Something I need you to explain. Why come to Moonrise, where the cult's power is strongest? Why not walk away? A wise ploy, and it was successful to an extent. We did not find a cure, but we found our purpose. I am satisfied. Now, I am ready to leave this damned place whenever you give the word. The city awaits! Just tell me what you need.
Lady. Our enemies still draw breath. orders I lead the way was it like it there in the curse Thy hunger denied. Saluna's faithful yet shines. The balance shifts. Thou hast seen with thine own eyes and felt in thine urges. The dead three unite. There are depths to this alliance yet unplumbed. Consider, mortal. Do illithids possess souls? Thou shalt think about it now, and I shall give the answer. Mind flayers are soulless. Yet, the three... Amass an illithid army, void of apostolic souls that could imbue them with power. A flock without souls, yet to what end, O oh, tempted one? This is the question thou must come to answer. Until such time, be availed of my services. Nothing thou dost not already know. Where matters of balance are concerned, I am eternally called. Yes, Bane, Lord of Darkness, Baal, Lord of Murder, Merkel, Lord of Bones, once judged, ascended, then vanquished as one and as three. The alliance is reforged, mortal. The plains thus quake, and the gods shudder. Our enemies spread like rub rot. Treat one patch, and two more bloom in its place. An elder brain, bound by lost Netherese magic, with servants of the dead three holding the chain. <laughs> Reminds me of old times. Extensively. Mind flares, too. But I never dreamed of seeing gods and illithids working in consort. It is most disturbing. But take courage. We have killed a man who could not die and stripped the Absolute's army of its general. You have a nether stone. And you're on the scent of two more. These chosen have reason to fear you, and I would like to be at your side when you confront them. 
glad to be there. Falling foul of Ketherick convinced me that my grand adventures were behind me. That even if I survived, I should hang up my blades. But you convinced me otherwise. We ventured into darkness together. Now we've come out the other side. I'd say I'm feeling a little refreshed. When we reach Baldur's Gate, there will be even darker paths to tread. I will follow you wherever they lead. How does it compare to a shadow cursed inn? With the Absolute's army gone, the Risen Road should be clear. We can follow it all the way to Baldur's Gate. There's a Harper's safe house in Worms Crossing. Dentalan's Dancing X. We do well to check in with them before entering the city proper. Beyond that, our course is yours to set. Find me at your camp, huh? I can remember how to take orders, as well as give them. Yes. No one back home will ever believe this. Do we have a target? your name. All's well that ends not as bad as it could have. You're beautiful. The curse is broken and the shadows are lifting. In time, these lands will heal. The shadows are lifted. Finally, we can breathe free. No, never. He did the only thing he could. In his eyes, I invited a devil into our midst. I was a fool at best, a traitor at worst. And Grand Duke Ravenguard suffers neither. More 
than you know. The better question is, did he ever miss me? If he did, he missed the Will Ravenguard he once knew, not the hell-touched warlock he returned to. The Shadows are losing their grip on these lands. Shah can indeed be thwarted. Comforting to know. You wanted something? I'm sorry. It might... I think we've done rather a good thing here. A welcome change to give this land a sliver of hope amongst so much despair. Gortash, didn't you? What the fuck was he doing down there? Is all of this because of him? The tadpole, the absolute. How? I was his bodyguard. I looked after him with my life. I trusted him more than anything. He gave me away to Zariel just for kicks. He ruined my life just when it was starting! And now he'll use up the entire Sword Coast. He has to die. And I'm gonna be the one who kills him! He can't get away with what he's done to me, to us. He won't get away with it. I can feel it. The engine. It's getting hotter, louder. It's going to blow if we don't find another way to fix it. You know, Zariel may have put the fucking thing in, but Gortash gave her the go-ahead. You expect this shit from devils, but not from the people you care about. Let's get to the city. Got business there I'm highly fucking keen to attend to. Thaniel rests well. He's healing very rapidly, now that Oliver has returned to him. I knew I could put my faith in you. If only we had met sooner. I can't say for certain, but we'll see it come to pass long before this place recedes behind us. Don't worry. All is at hand. We can depart whenever you're ready. I have. But perhaps there is more that I want. Anyway, once the curse is lifted, nature can take its course without me. I belong at your side. And I'm glad to be had. Glad to be with you, I mean. No more than my right hand can absorb my left. Oliver is helping Thaniel to recover. They both lie dormant, like trees awaiting spring. Once the curse is lifted, they can stand as one or as a pair. Whatever they wish, I hope they will remain as a pair. It will be good for them both to have a friend once I'm gone. Still, I would like to return here someday. See Thaniel and Oliver again. In my meditations, or perhaps in person. If the Oak Father wills it. I hope he does. for one will miss the shadow curse for all the pain it caused us it did at least obscure the incessant sun i take no pleasure in his passing whatever faults he may have had ketherick was a great leader
Life was crueler to him than death. It is no great wonder that he found his strength in Merkel. I believe he was an honorable man, but the gods used him as their plaything. First, Shah and her sister, then the three behind the Absolute. I sympathize. It is a sharp mind that feels sympathy for one who suffers unnecessarily, not a soft heart. I saw strength in Ketherick, that had been diluted by pain. But I will never forgive him, for handing me to Orin. For that, <laughs> I hope Merkel hollows out his bones and lets them be dust. A true soul came to my city, preaching a message of togetherness, accompanied by two novices. Menzo Baranson is not fertile ground for such messages. I killed them, and hanged their bodies in my garden. I thought so too. This world is full of fools, after all. But in this instance, I was mistaken. Our visitors were not fools. They were bait. Even as the flesh sagged and sloughed away from their eyeless skulls, their audacity infuriated me. I had to know where they came from. <sighs> and whoever sent them was counting on my curiosity overcoming my caution. Yes. All it took was a simple act of necromancy, and the corpses told me where I needed to strike. Moonrise Towers. No. I was prepared for combat, but I intended to strike subtly. As it turned out, to my shame. I was defeated without even drawing my weapon. I came to Moonrise with a retinue of warriors and assassins, the best House Bane Ray had to offer. I expected a battle, but found a fully laden feast table, and a welcome befitting a house matron. <sighs> Ketherick expected us, expected me, and I fell for his flattery. It is a mistake I hope never to repeat. Ketherick proposed an alliance between Moonrise and Menza Baranzen. I admit I was captivated by him. He invited me to the head of his table as his guest of honor. I was wary, of course. If I had been in his position, the food would have been poisoned. It was not the food I should have been wary of. It was the pale woman at the foot of the table. Orin the Red. We had barely begun to eat when she spoke for the first time. I only caught one word, my name. Then, quick as lightning, she climbed onto the table, a dagger in each hand, and skipped toward me, slicing the throats out of my men as she passed them. Few things frighten me. Orin is one of them. Ketherick held me still. His hand on my shoulder, the grip tight enough to crack the bone. When Orin stood before me, she touched the dagger to my eye, drawing out a tear of blood. I want this one, she said. Ketherick nodded his permission, and I was taken below. You've seen the horrors of the colony. Orin kept me there for days. She forced me to watch as my men were processed. Some for food, others as thralls. And then she placed the tadpole in my eye herself. That is certain. You know the rest as well as I do. There were massacres before the grove. Religious communities, mostly. 
those who refused to convert. Then there was you, and now there is freedom. <sighs> Soon there will be vengeance. I would not linger in this land over long, but whatever your business, I will aid you if I can. What do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shaz... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadowheart's. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. that man you already know did you not see yourself in him do you not recognize your own blood my father that was him that is him he lives still and your mother too no it can't be I'm an orphan and who told you that your adoptive family you are not to blame you were young Impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. One who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades. Mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come. But not yet forearmed. I was able to retrieve it before it sank too far into Shah's umbral domain. Shah is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough. But I felt it call to me. As I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, 
That will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <laughs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm glad to have some company on this journey. Fine. What's on your mind? How are you holding up? Don't be so modest. I can't remember the last time I met someone like you. Perhaps I never did. And never will again. Curse to put my hands on everything. When Duke Elton formed the Flaming Fist, he sought out people of courage and honor to fill its ranks. You saved Daniel, lifted the curse, and killed an immortal. It's safe to say you'd have been recruited in an instant. Of course, I have no idea what life is like under Duke Ravengard's rule. But I've seen the respect he inspires in the Flaming Fist. And that tells me all I need about him as a leader. I hope you can save Duke Ravengard. For the good of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Thank you. But look at me. I am a relic. A glimpse of history barely strong enough to stand on his own two feet. Besides, Thaniel should have someone here when he wakes up. It's the least I can do. You too, my friend. Thank you. From Thaniel and I. I've been lied to. My whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it. My parents are alive, and I have to save them. I think a part of me always knew that. A part that Shah denied to me. Indeed. But the truth may yet prove painful. Who knows what Shah still keeps from me? We'd better press on for now, and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, there's one thing I need to see to. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me.
leave the heart of the Absolute alive, thanks to you. You did well to defeat Ketherick, but Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. Whatever you might do to one, cannot be worse than what the Chosen will unleash on all. And you are the one who could prevent it. You have the makings of a leader. Your actions have already inspired those around you. Jahira's wisdom will be an asset to you on the journey ahead. Her harpers too. Halsin's strength and loyalty will bolster you in times of need. But if we are to succeed, we will need others. Baldur's Gate may not know it yet, but its fate is bound to ours. Seek on its streets those whose purpose aligns with our own, and invite them to our cause. Together, we will put an end to the Absolute, the Chosen. Oh. is banished. I like the dark, but not when it's trying to kill me. Moving in. The Absolute's army are on the march, and Baldur's Gate is their target. <laughs> what now? Oh. Curse has been lifted, the lands cleansed of the shadows. Catherick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this at least, you have triumphed.
Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worms Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. My prodigal bloodkin is among them. They live? <laughs> Barely. I made mince of their ugly mind matter. And if they dare return, I will strip out their off. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. The gate is closed, as is Casador. Casador and his right of profane ascension. An imperious soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. We will kill him, but there's more to it. Think about it. It sounds like Casador, for all his evils, has gotten further than any of my kind ever have. He's on the verge of a miracle. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> What's a handful of the wretched servants? If they're anything like me when I was enslaved, they're all but begging for death anyway. After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. I know you do. It matters to me as well. I want to be able to protect you, too. 
All I'm saying is, let's be clever about it. If an opportunity arises for me to become a more magnificent bastard than I already am, why turn it down? Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Cazador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. <laughs> You're too adorable. I'll be fine. I'm sure they'll bring back memories of so many pathetic years. But I'm much stronger now. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Cazadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. So, it's a quest to free Shadowheart's parents, is it? And here I was, worried I'd be the only one with a difficult family reunion waiting in the city. I was just wondering when you'd invite me back for a bite. Shadowheart was no true child of Shah, merely a captive. She must have her vengeance. Taken from the light to be raised in darkness, your truth is finally dawning, Shadowheart. You can follow its light, or you can retreat back into dusk. The truth is finally dawning. Shadowheart can follow its light, or she can ret I wasn't expecting it. Dream in red. Absolute should be a thing of the past, and I with it. Yet, at the risk of angering Mr. Fervor, I'm glad it didn't come to that, given what has come to light. The Elder Brain, but more importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but... No matter. It exists. I must learn more of it. That crown sits on a gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep, Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can.
The only kind I have? Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nethery sex are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. Poor Shadowheart. She's been jerked around so much. I want to believe the gods keep this world balanced, but sometimes... Sometimes I wonder. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work, guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I like that. Not like that, you know. Just... It felt like a good fit. I kept him safe and he paid me well. Well enough to move into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future. I respected him. Trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not-quite-kid. The next, I was burning up in a Vernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil bastard. It does not surprise me that Shadowheart's faith was based on a lie. Deception is the sum of Shah's design. Here goes nothing. of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prison and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With his help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. And what then? You are prone to impulses as uncontrollable as the gods themselves. Will you even have a say in what you do? Will you liberate the true souls from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? You will 
not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. Two steps at a time. Of course. Guards, any moment now that orb is going to explode. Be on my way.
Under the skull. I hope this is important. For your sake. If I must. Never a dull moment. Hurry! I can't hold them back alone. Very well. It's not over. Come to the skull. Tentacled freak. What in the hells is this? The Gith Yankee is the source of our protection against the Absolute. I must subdue him, or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my form deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. someone inside out.
advantage.
don't look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. By the living gods. No more visions, no more lies. I expect answers. Now. If I'd known you would be so open-minded, I would have saved myself a lot of effort. But I'm glad you're not here to judge. I was someone once. Someone just like you. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate. Though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillman. We formed a partnership. And through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People refer to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. His hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' mother to bring about the fall of the Elithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, a usurper took her place. Blacketh declared herself queen. Blacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince, and if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blacketh was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. 
If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blackheath will be finished. A very good question. One that I have been unable to answer. That Orpheus lives at all is ruinous to Blackheath. She has done everything in her power to keep his existence a secret. That Gortash and the Chosen found out about it. This is impossible to explain. But it was important enough to them that Gortash sent me to retrieve it. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside. And found Orpheus. I realized what the prison was for. Containment. While my body was within the prison's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense will be to kill him. And in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic, and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. I understand. Let us hope, then, that your present self will be sufficient to deal with three gods of death and a giant magically enhanced Elder Brain. But in case you change your mind... Look after it. Use it when you're ready to evolve. You or your allies. It has vitality enough for you all, but we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. 
The brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the brain, and bring it under our control. Anything of value? Open up. Already feeling better. So? We owe our lack of tentacles to one of the very creatures that kidnapped us. And now it's offering us power if we're willing to... evolve. We both know what it is capable of, but I'm not touching it. That was before I knew the cost. Before I knew it meant transforming into some grotesque beast. I remember how it hurt when I turned into a vampire. My body writhed and warped while I was utterly helpless. The grip of death owned my heart as it beat its last. I, I don't want to turn into anything else. I can't do that again. I can't watch my body be taken over. I had nothing for so long. Nothing. Not even my own body. I will not give it up. Now it's mine again. Alderan's bones, this is a lot to take in. Let's see if I've got this right. One, we've been carrying a mind flayer around with us this whole time. Two, it's been appearing as someone else in our dreams, cajoling us to embrace our new illithid talents. Three, the mind flayer's been siphoning a gif Yankee prisoner's powers to shield us from the Absolute's voice. Did I miss anything? How could I forget? One of Baldur's Gate's most distinguished figures, a Mind Flayer's ally. Sensational tales, aren't they? Almost unbelievable. With a narrator so unreliable, how do we tell fact from fiction? I can't pretend I have the answer, but I know the Illithids write about one thing. It holds our fates in its talons. Until the Absolute falls, there's no getting rid of it. Yes, and at a great cost, partial ceramorphosis. I'm not about to make such a sacrifice. Not now, not ever. 
Thank you. You wish to consult me? We will need every advantage to survive the battles that are to come. And my illicit parasite has already shown its worth. If this superior tadpole is capable of unlocking my mind's full potential, it is a tempting proposition. I am surprised you have not drawn on its power yourself. I will be unstoppable. Life pulses from within. The parasite's thoughts whisper at the edge of your mind. It wants to share itself with you. It wants to be let in. Go on. Don't be afraid. It only wants to help you evolve. for growth with painful intensity. It has been starved of life, of purpose. It welcomes your probing like a void waiting to be filled. If you let it, it will evolve you. Just as the Emperor said, your thoughts swirl with possibility. Your body strengthened, your mind bolstered, your very self expanded. All within your reach if you open your mind to the parasite. Coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens, its yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. Perhaps, once the others see what you can do, they will consider trying it for themselves. There can be no respite. You wish to consult me? 